Hey YouTube, what's going on? Lionheart here, and on today's video, I'm going to talk about the builds I've been running that took me from early adventurer rank up to where we are now, adventure rank 41, and I'll go into a little bit about what I have planned for the future in terms of how I'm going to evolve my builds. One thing I want to make absolutely clear at the front end of this video is that the gear that I'm currently running, while it may look impressive in my live streams or some of my videos because you're seeing bigger numbers, it's all temporary gear. It's not gear that I plan to run for the long haul, and it's definitely not what you should consider as like a, a best in slot build or um, anything that you would go out and be like, hey, yeah, this is the only way to build that character. Uh, it's not true. These are all just temporary pieces. They're designed to get me to AR 45 and AR 50 as fast as I can so that I can really start farming for full five star sets and experimenting with different kinds of artifacts to see, you know, what is going to be best on characters. OK, but a lot of people have been asking, like, hey, I, your D Luke hits really hard. Like, how is that possible? Uh, you know, what are you running? Show me your build. And so I feel like this video is for you guys uh, who are curious and want to see what I'm running. Um, so let's just jump into characters and we can go straight to D Luke. D Luke is currently uh, level 80. His attack is uh, just over 2200. And if we go into the details, you'll see his crit rate is about 34 percent and his critical damage is 107 percent. OK, and uh, what we decided to do for D. Luke is two things. First, we're running a five star weapon. This matters because you may not have access to a five star weapon and you can get, as you can see, quite a lot of stats, right? Over 500 attack is coming from this weapon and it also has a 45 percent boost to its attack. In addition to some pretty crazy passives that I think uh, are, are amazing, right? Another increase in attack by 20%. And then, you know, when we're hitting low health enemies, you'll see this wolf appear over our head. And, and, and then that's a 40% attack boost um, that lasts for 12 seconds. This sword is uh, my favorite weapon in the game. And I think it's very, very strong uh, and, a, and a big contributor to a, where a lot of our damage comes from. Okay. In addition to the sword, we also run uh, purple artifacts. Everything is plus 16. Um, we took one set of gear to plus 16 for our primary damage dealer and we took another set of gear to plus 16 for our secondary damage dealer which originally was Kuching and now is uh, official and I'll show you the gear and it actually doesn't make as much sense on official um, in terms of like the set bonuses we got but but I'll explain why it's that way in a moment. So for D Luke, you can see right here, um, Berserker is a set that I tried to run on as many people as I could. And so I really prioritized two piece Berserker where I could find um, pieces that fit. And for him, it's actually the flower and the feather. And the flower and the feather have fixed roles. They're not variable. The flower is always going to be uh, flat HP as its primary stat, and the feather is always going to be flat attack as its primary stat. Where the hourglass, uh, the chalice, and the uh, headpiece, those are always uh, variable. Their primary stat can be different, right? It can roll different things. And so those are the harder pieces to fit into builds where you can be pretty consistent about um, the flower and the feather. So if you're trying to build something, bridge up and you want a two piece set, the easiest place to, to zero in on a two piece set is going to be the flower and the feather. Okay. Our flower actually rolled pretty good. We have crit rate, attack, crit damage, and HP as it went up to plus 16. Unfortunately, everything went into HP. So, uh, these numbers are all pretty low, but, um, you know, if I was looking at like a five star piece, this would be really sexy to me. Um, HP could be replaced by some other things, but but the general idea of like crit rate attack and crit damage are cool. I'm going to tell you to not worry about any of this. Ignore the substats on the pieces that you're building as a bridge. They're not important. And even though this flower rolled nice, we actually didn't even look for substats on most of our pieces. The only thing we paid attention to is the primary stat and then the set. And again, for the flower and for the feather, you know, it's always going to be flower is always going to be HP, right? We can click on all these other ones. You'll see they're all HP. It never changes, right? And it's the same thing for the feather, right? Feather is always attack. It never changes. Okay. So it doesn't really matter what you're running um, in that. And that's where you can target a set really easily. So like Berserker, I think is a really good set to target. Maybe you want martial artists is also good. Um, but I would recommend something that focuses on offensive power. OK, and take those to plus 16. And do, again, don't worry too much about the substats for your other pieces. I think you're going to focus on attack percentage um, and you'll see that almost all of my other pieces that have come up to plus 16, they focus on attack percentage, right? That's 
the valuable stat. I don't care what's here. If you can make it work with like a set piece, you know, like you can get another set bonus, that's cool. But, you know, if you get no more set bonuses other than what your flower and feather provide, I actually think that's totally okay. As long as you're running attack percentage as the primary stat in your hourglass and in your chalice. You should probably also run it for your headpiece, but for D Luke, we actually ran crit damage. Um, and it's mainly because I just wanted to experiment with it and see how it worked. And I felt like everybody else was just saying, only do attack, only do attack, only do attack. And I'm like, well, if it sucks, we'll be fine. We can get some attack. But I want to learn some lessons. And so in addition to building an attack one, which we have and it's on official, um, I built a crit damage one. And we also built a crit rate one just to see what those numbers would look like at plus 16. And if they were any good. Yeah, I know it's on Chi Chi, so it's kind of wasted. But anyway, um, so yeah. So the fact that we're running Instructor, which increases elemental mastery by 80 on D Luke, is just a coincidence that we found two pieces of instructor that had the stats we want right we found the headpiece and we found the chalice but we chose these pieces because of their primary stat not because of the set bonus this is just like an extra add-on um i don't think elemental master is probably what you want to run on d luke uh, at all but like the set pieces fit okay so if you're looking at what my d luke build is and you're like man i want to hit really hard this is what we're running the flower the feather, the hourglass, the chalice, and the headpiece. Okay? Um, for Fischl, who's our other damage dealer, we actually started out with this set on Kaching, and then we realized Fischl was really good, <laughs> and our Fischl could be quite strong, and so we moved all of our artifacts off of Kaching and onto Fischl. Um, so Fischl is running, again, everything is plus 16. Just like D. Luke, and um, in her case, and we can actually uh, back out. Oops, sorry, go back into details. Um, she's sitting at again just over 2k attack at 2100, and if you go into the details, her crit rate's 45%, and her crit damage though is lower. It's only 91%. Um, for official, what we're running weapon-wise is Skyward Harp, which provides crit rate, and again, it's a five-star bow, and it's at 590 base attack. Um, and we've basically tried to stay at the front end of upgrades the entire time with enhancement. Um, we'll be blocked out of upgrades until AR 50, but, um, and this is, this is so hard to get. We've run this dungeon that drops this like 12 times and haven't seen a single one. So yeah, uh, I think it'll be a while before our weapons go up anymore, but, um, this is the bow we're running. And then artifact wise, we can just go into it real quick. Um, again, for, uh, the flower, we ended up targeting, uh, berserkers um, we didn't actually build it through uh, the flower feather combo this time because we had a feather that dropped early this was one of our early like four star feathers and so you know pretty early on when you don't have a large selection like we have now of four star feathers we just kind of zeroed in on okay this one looks good we don't have a lot of feathers so we're gonna run it because we just want to run a four star feather and then we then we pieced it together after that right we went out and found an hourglass that had rolled attack and then we went out and found uh, a chalice that had rolled attack that doesn't fit into any sets. And then we went out and found uh, uh, eyepiece, I guess it's a headpiece, right? But like a monocool that, um, I don't know if I'm saying that right, but that uh, basically rolled attack, right? And we just ignore the substats. You can see the substats are all over the place, right? What we have is just kind of random. Um, don't worry about the substats, you know, energy recharge on visual again not really great just like elemental master on d luke um it was just something that we could put together while getting the stats that we wanted which for her is all attack okay and uh yeah that's basically what we did and then you know we piecemealed the rest of our characters together we have two sets that are plus 16 everybody else is running like mumbo jumbo garbage dude like plus zero we had an extra plus 16 feather right that we decided okay well it's plus 16 we don't want to waste it but like just like You'll see, dude, totally random stuff, like some plus zeros. I mean, we took this to plus 12. This is a healing helmet. Don't do this. It, it was not good, but we just wanted to experiment, right? And I think that's half the fun is like learning about what the different things do and what's the impact on them and stuff like that. So, 
you know, we just kind of have run with different set pieces. Um, and like, I mean, she's got a blue on her, dude. Like, what? I didn't even know this. I just, I'm finding this out as we're making the video. She's got a blue on her. Like, <laughs> you know, like we just kind of threw trash on the rest of our team because the reality is for most of the content, the people who were playing is D Luke and Fischl, and they're the ones dealing damage, and everybody else is really coming in for like elemental reaction and support. Although I will tell you, um, our Mona actually hits pretty hard, and our heals uh, from Chi-Chi are extraordinary. And we've also used Jean mainly as an ulti bot right now, um, and we have like a, like the Favonia sword on her, so that way she could just charge her ulti up as much as possible. And haven't really been able to invest into all these characters the way we want, but I think you're gonna have the same challenge. It's hard to invest in the characters in a a meaningful way without wasting a lot of resources or being broke on Mora all the time, especially if you're free to play. So, um, so I would really focus in on like two sets for damage dealers. Who are they going to be? Um, and make sure that you know you're taking those purples. Uh, I think to plus sixteen, focusing primarily on attack stat, and again working in you know berserker or martial artist or another bonus that you like set bonus, but doing it on the feather and the flower again because it's easy and those primary stat rolls are fixed they never change okay so yeah that's uh that's our characters that's what we're running um and you can see the overall stats across the board of each of them and these are the people that we've cleared most of the content with it's allowed us to get all the way up to abyss floor uh uh, 10 we've actually cleared floor 10 but only with four stars so we're not allowed to move to floor 11 yet we need a little bit more damage um and you know we've grinded all the way to ar41 with this equipment and i think it will carry us um you know through to ar45 and maybe even beyond as we slowly put together other sets what other sets are we working on well it's a great question um and i told you i would answer that some of the things that um, I feel like are important for us. Uh, we're running a lot of melee characters. So working on a gladiator set, I think is really important. And by the way, I know some people were confused about this. It only shows flowers here, but it actually drops pieces from the entire set. So it's a little confusing how they did the UI. They just show you the flower, but like when you see a flower, that's just a flower. It means every piece of this set actually drops. And it's just for clarity's sake, you know, they're only showing you one thing. So um, it's a little confusing, but anyways. Um, so Gladiators is our highest priority. Um, I think this is good on a lot of our characters. We're running a lot of sword characters. We're running uh, D. Luke for Claymore, and I'd like to improve more Claymore characters. So I feel like this is a very potent set for us. Uh, we are not really running too many Animo characters, but if we were, I do think that the uh, Animo set is incredibly strong. Unfortunately, it's paired with another set that you're maybe not going to love as much. Uh, but I don't know. Maybe you put it on Barber or something and, and it's got a place, I'm sure. Um, but for me, I'm looking at really offensive sets. And so I'm not worried as much about like Jean at the moment or Chi Chi. I'm really worried about my damage dealers. And so for D Luke, Gladiators is the way to go. For Fischl, um, I'm toying with two different ideas. I'm looking at both Thundering Fury. And I'm also looking at Thunder Soother. For me, I think that Thundering Fury is cool and she does deal a lot of electro damage bonus, but the ability to reduce her skill could also be really good, you know, because then we could maybe have permanent uptime for Oz, which is her bird. And I think that could be like really, really strong. At the same time, Thunder Soother, while the two piece set seems a little strange to me, the idea of increase our, our damage against an enemy who's under the effect of electro by 35%, seems really really good and because we have oz out all the time already between cycling our ultimate and summoning him um, i think that actually this could be maybe the better option i don't know i'm going to experiment with both um, and then see where things go and for everybody else i'm not really too worried about gear right now i think it's going to take me a long time with the drop rates how they are at ar40 to even be able to complete, you know, a Thunder Soother set and a Thundering Fury set and also work on a Gladiator set. Um, it is worth noting that there is a Pyro uh, artifact set as well that um, could be pretty good on D-Luke. Um, uh, first, you have Crimson Witch of Flames. 
which can stack up to three times, increasing the effectiveness of pyro damage bonus. And then you also have Lava Walker, which is basically the equivalent of the other uh, Thunder Shoe, the one that we looked at. So uh, these could maybe be good. I don't know. I feel like I'm just going to go Gladiator first because I need to farm a lot of these world bosses. And, uh, you know, then for official, uh, I think I can look over in this range. So cool. That's it. Um, that's basically where we're at right now for uh this video and for our equipment i hopefully this helps you in your own equipment planning and your progress towards ar40 and beyond if you like the content please subscribe to the channel and uh, follow us on twitch we stream every weekday starting at 9 p.m eastern uh, for at least five hours so yeah thanks so much for watching my video and i uh, hope you have a wonderful day